I was at church and I was praising God and um, he spoke to me very clearly and he gave me a vision of Santa's workshop and the broken toys and he said to me I want you to use the broken mm. to help the broken because they understand yeah. and that's, that's where we've been good. ever since all my workers every single one of them know what it's like to be broken and that's why they can help the broken because they know where they come from they know what it's like to be hungry. They know what it's like to live in filth. They know what it's like to not sleep on a bed. We've all been in things that are awful. And we know how to help people because we, we survived it thanks to Jesus. Right. And so we can all help because we've been there. Judy can cook anything out of nothing because she's <laughs> lived with little. Yes. Nope. So she can cook out of nothing. We can help those that have nothing because we know what it's like. Mm. So Hope Ministry has been around, has been established for six years. Six years. And, and, and who's been here for the whole six years? Kayla. Kayla. Kayla's been with me the whole From six the years. Beginning. From the beginning. <laughs> How was that? How's it been to see it change? It's been amazing. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I really do. And what does Hope Ministry do? What do we do? I know, a little bit of everything. I, I know. It's because I couldn't remember <laughs> yesterday. Okay, so our after school program, um, we have computer lab where it hooks up to the school so we can help them with their homework. We feed them, they get snacks, and we try to do healthy snacks, but Barbie keeps sneaking and jump. <laughs> Somebody else sneaks in. <laughs> you can tell Judy and I are older. We we um we don't do that, do we? I it's supposed to be healthy. So they get fed, they get dessert, they get snacks and juice boxes when they first come in to do their homework. Just like if you had the perfect family. You come home from school, what do you want? You want a snack and a drink and do your homework. I try to think of it like June Cleaver. What would she do if she came her kids came home. She, you'd want to come home, get a hug, sit down in a nice warm house, have a snack, have hope, help with your homework. And then when you're done with that, what do you want? You want undivided attention from someone that loves you, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Isn't that what you want when you come home from school? You've been with all those other kids. You've probably been bullied because these kids don't have anything. And I was so bullied in school, and when I came home, I wanted my mom's love. We also have a medical equipment group uh, room, and this was super important to me because of what I do. We were getting all this medical equipment, we were putting it in the yard sales, it wasn't selling. But then when someone would need something, they would call, and we had already gotten rid of it, and I finally said, this is enough of this. So, I called my buddy Dennis, and Dennis got me all these nice shelves, Karen put them all up. <laughs> <laughs> it was a job, wasn't it? So now we have all these nice shelves and we have wheelchairs, walkers, um, Hoyer lifts, um, bedside commodes, anything you can think of. We have huge shelves of nothing but depends. Ensure anything you need for medical needs now, they can come and get it for free or they can leave a small donation. Um, and then in the summer, we have a lot of young people that I actually hire to come in and just help us. Just to give them extra spending money, get them off the streets. They're kids that are really high risk. Mm. Um, this summer, we had a couple homeless ones. Um, for the homeless, we do, um, we have showers and laundry facilities. So they don't use them as much in the summer, but in the winter, we get too busy, huh, girls? <laughs> so what will happen is they'll ring the doorbell, they'll say, can I shower? So they'll shower, the girls will make them a hot meal. They'll come in, they'll eat their meal, they'll do their laundry. And, and so um, my heart is for them. You know, I don't think it's all their fault that they're addicts. I mean, I know there's lots of people that disagree with me, but addicts don't become addicts because they have a perfect life. And even if they were raised with money, they become addicts for, because 
something has a thing. Something was something missing. Something was missing in their mm -hmm. life. And um, so I really have a heart for them. And how are they ever going to get clean if they don't think anybody loves them? Right. You know? And um, I love them. And I hug on them. And we love on them. And we make sure they have what they need. If it's warm clothes or hand warmers or whatever, Judy's really good at making sure we have long underwear back there and warm socks and gloves. And Judy makes sure that everything they need is back there. Thank <laughs> you.